this one's going to be a little bit of fun simply because it's probably a movie that went under a lot of people's radars. Um, I know that it was something that I was looking forward to for a while, but it was really hard to find simply because it was a film that was released um, at the Sundance Film Festival's 2022 sometime like at the beginning of 2022 i think it was like january not 2022 2020 i'm sorry so it was released at the sundance film festival picked up a lot of steam but then wasn't really released like nationally or at least in the states here until august of the following year so about a year and a half later this film finally makes its way out to major people to kind of watch and find a place to watch and really like get exposed to it so it took me at least two years from even hearing about it to finally get to actually see it um and then i watched it earlier this year and i thought it was really good and it's been on my list to do an entry for and i figured i'd do it for this year uh halloween because it is very much a horror movie that's fitting for this time of year i thought this film was so good from start to finish it's just it's very creepy it's very unsettling it's pinned as a psychological horror and it definitely portrays that but there's just so much to the development being that it really just follows the main character and there isn't much else so you take the runtime and it's just sort of following the story of the the main character who is this wife whose husband died um, from suicide. He kills himself, and she starts going down this realm of, like, sort of dealing with it, but then also sort of discovering some things about him that she wasn't 100% aware of, like um, this complete other woman that apparently looks just like her that he was, um, like stalking or something but she's discovering all this as she's like going through this drunken tirade of being depressed and she's not realizing that there's actually something real real deep about what he's doing and it's the fact that the husband was like haunted by this sort of demon-esque apparition that really wanted to like kill both him and his wife and the way he kind of kept her kept her like safe i guess you could say is that he built a complete other house which she never knew about until after he died and she discovered it like she lives on this lake um uh foundation right across the lake directly across the lake like perpendicular to her is a house built the exact same way that theirs is built i think it's like slightly like mirrored so, like, if one house is on, if one room in the house is on, like, the left, if you go to the other side, it's going to be on the right, but it's the exact same room, and it's still everything else that's formatted, where stairs are and everything. It just wasn't, like, finished, but this was all apparently the husband's way of, like, making sure to confuse the demon after, like, he died, because he thought, like, eventually he can just kill himself, and then the, 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 it would stop going after his wife and it was sort of this thing where it's like i'm gonna kill myself so i can protect my wife but i've also left this huge booby trap by not only just building this completely other house to trick the demon but also that's where the lady comes in this complete other woman that he's apparently stalking in the eyes of the wife is actually just an exact well not a doppelganger or an exact copy but she looks exactly like the wife like it's very much so that he was stalking somebody that looked just like her and he was getting close so maybe the demon would get confused and then try to like kill this other woman instead of his wife it's just a really really crazy twisted story and to just see this woman go through this loophole of like not understanding what's happening and not understanding that she didn't know anything about her husband to eventually lead up to that huge twist of it being that the whole time she's actually ruining everything the husband set set foot for her. Like, he's purposely looked up what, who the demon is, what the demon brings to the table, and he's gotten, in the bookstore where he's, like, stalking the woman, he's gotten all of the books that he sort of 
needs to learn who the demon is and what it is that he's being traumatized by. So he does all the stuff that's necessary, but also he's like like creating these sort of totems that are also acting as, I guess, maybe stopping points or like pillars to sort of keep it at bay or keep it confused by also attaching things like the remind um, that can attach to the totem, like her, the, the smell of her, pieces of her hair and stuff like that. And, you know, s- sentimental things that can kind of distract this sort of supernatural being. And she starts fucking it all up because she thinks it's something even crazier than that. And it's just, it's, it's ups- not upsetting, not funny. It's weird because you follow this path for her and you watch her go down this road and you're like, what, what is the end all going to be? And then you discover she's actually like in immediate danger and she doesn't realize it because he never told her anything. And she's just going around thinking that he had some secret life that she's now unraveling. But what she's really unraveling is a safety net that her husband left so she didn't get tackled by this supernatural being that wants, like, her soul as well as her husband's soul, which she already sort of has. So it's this real, real wild ride, and I just loved it from start to finish. Maybe it's because it's Rebecca Hall, and there's a lot that Rebecca Hall has done. Um, in her career that I really do appreciate. She is definitely, like, uh, a favorite of mine. You know, uh, not even just The Night House. She's also had roles in um, things like uh, Professor Martin and The Wonder Woman, which was that story about the guy who created the Wonder Woman character and his, like, interesting marriage. Um, She's done things like uh, Transcendence uh, with Johnny Depp, one of the few films he's done in the last decade where he doesn't put a ton of makeup on. Um, she was in The Prestige, uh, she's also done some smaller roles, like she was in Iron Man 3, she played, uh, the character, uh, who's like the girl, sort of girlfriend from before Pepper Potts, when they were, like, back in, um, like, college, I think, and she's, like, the connection between the guy Pierce character, who turns out to be the Mandalorian, um, the Mandarin, not the Mandalorian, two different shows, the Mandarin, um, she also did a movie uh, a couple of years ago called Christine, which was a uh, a biopic uh, film that sort of described the life leading up to that famous anchor who shot herself on live television. Rebecca Hall is a tremendous actress, and The Night House is just definitely a, a shining light um, for that fact. So being that it's a movie with her, and it's probably the most recent film I think she's done, uh, I, don't, I haven't heard anything with her in a while i've seen anything with her in a while so i think that's her most recent film and it's it's definitely good it's also got um sarah goldberg who many might know from barry uh the hbo show barry i'm a big fan of that uh show and i think that's this is one of the first things i've seen um this actress do outside of barry so that's really nice too to see that she's doing more stuff um because i think she's a good actress as well um and this movie just as a whole is just totally worth watching for the Halloween season or just any time of year. Like it's it's a really really good film to sit and watch the story unfold. I I thoroughly enjoyed it and it's really upsetting that it doesn't really get a lot of the praise that I think it deserves. Uh I don't believe the writers have done anything else that might be kind of worth mentioning, but I do know that the the um the director is also connected to um, the first uh, VHS movie. And I also think it's the same director. Let me check. I believe... Yeah, it is. It is. And it's the same director of the new Hellraiser movie as well. So the director has a couple of horror things under his belt where it, he's making a name for himself as sort of a a horror-esque person. Oh, he also did The Ritual. Okay. Ritual is a great movie that was on Netflix that you should definitely watch. Maybe I should do an entry on the Ritual. I don't remember it all that well. I should I should consider that. But yeah, David Bruckner. David Bruckner. Ah, you you you're getting up there, David. You're getting up there. You definitely got some some good credits under your name for at least the last ten or eleven years. VHS, the Rich. Oh, he did Siren. Oh no, he was a producer on Siren. I get it. Yeah. Siren. Maybe I should talk about Siren. Maybe I should do an entry about Siren, and I should do an entry about a ritual. I'll think about that. But, but regardless of my my me digressing right now, please go watch the Night House. It's it's totally worth it.